Thanks for staying here on News Desk. Now, the past year, 2018, came with a number of public health issues bothering on food safety uh, on, on, on our markets. Now, a couple of these stories caused panic among consuming public on the quality of food uh, products purchased from the open market. You recall the plastic rice issue, plastic salmon, sutari tilapia, debacle, and even deaths in some parts of the Volta region following the consumption of uh, maize believed to be poisoned, a maize flour believed to be poisoned, and also the puffer fish. The list goes on and on. Well, it's 2019, and we here are concerned about your health uh, as, as we are concerned about ours too while we go about daily to the market to get something to eat. But how safe are the products we get from our stalls in the market to our kitchens? And can anything be done about it? Can you tell? Well, we've been joined by Maria Lovelace Johnson, and she is the Chief Regulatory Officer and Head of Food Enforcement Department at the Food and Drugs Authority. And we're going to be having a conversation that will benefit you, so you want to really listen to this. Good, good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Now, and, and a very happy new year to you. Uh, like I mentioned, 2018 was... Uh, quite eventful when you talk about food safety. So many videos uh, popped up, but people were saying that they had bought plastic rice here, and or they had seen plastic fish here. And there's just this plastic, plastic issue. Have we been able to identify on our markets any product at all for consumption that contains any plastic element? No, thank you very much. No, we haven't because all these ones are not true. We have a plastic rice issue that was even in 2017. A trickling into 2018. Yes, and then we even had a press conference. We called all the people that mattered us in the press people, did an experiment with them, really showed them how rice cannot be plastic. We had um, we had a laboratory set up, let me put it that way, and we just show them how, you know, rice is, and we've explained this over and over again, that rice is boiled at 100 degrees Celsius. Plastic does not melt at 100 degrees Celsius. It melts higher than, at temperatures higher than that. Mm. So if it's being boiled at 100 degrees Celsius, it will not even melt. And that plastic is not something that will be chewable. You cannot masticate it. Much more think of swallowing it and it getting into the belly and then digesting. Mm. So that is not true. It's not plastic. Mm. And then in 2018, we had the plastic fish issue. That plastic fish issue, we had a press release as well to explain to the general public. You know, they, ha they were thinking that the skin was plastic. Some fishes do not have skills, or they have very few skills. And so nature compensates for it by giving it a, a tougher skin, a more elastic skin, because the skin is supposed to protect the fish. And so the skills are even better at protecting the fish. You know how the skills are. Mm. So if they don't have skills, then they have a more elastic skin that has more collagen and all that. So it stretches. And so when they see it that way, they think, no, then in this era of plastic things, it may be plastic fish. And then you get to the flesh of the fish itself too, and the way there were there was this video mm -hmm. showing that it's foamy. That is just because it is not kept well. You know, there are cells in every living thing. The fish has cells too. So when the, um, the fish is frozen, the cells expand to be able to take in the crystals of the ice. So when it falls, then it relaxes. And so there is this freezing, thawing, freezing, thawing. And so let me just, for the sake of the layman, let me use the balloon. You know, when you have a new balloon, that's, let's take the cell that is not frozen, mm. and then you blow it. When you release it, the, mm. the texture changes. So Because it's been stretched. Stretched, exactly. So it doesn't get back to that same... Um, shape and then everything becomes always being straight that's how the cells in the fish behave okay now you mentioned that um, the video we saw with the 
for me uh, looking fresh is because mm -hmm. the fish was not kept well. Exactly. In this season that we are in, coming out of Christmas into the new year, how safe am I as a consumer if I just go out onto the market to say I'm going to buy anything frozen food uh, or even uh, tin food, fresh vegetables, anything? How safe am I? Well, the Food and Drugs Authority has put um, measures in place to ensure that all these things are kept properly, especially with the fish, meats, and all that. We are intensifying public education, especially for the consumer to know what he or she is buying. And also the retailers, we are training them, we are enforcing, we are licensed. We've already been licensing cold stores and all that. We are now even strengthening everything just to make sure that the retailers who are even in the habit of turning off their freezing equipment during the daytime because they think the opening and closing and all that is going to um, increase their electric electricity bills. We are telling them that is a no-no. Oh. They need to turn it on. Over the time, uh, speaking to different officials from the FDA, it, it sounds as though we do so much education but less enforcement. So you've educated the retailer, don't switch your fridge on and off because it's going to affect the quality of the products in there. But how are we ensuring that they really do what we are asking them to do? We do a lot of enforcement as well. We do a lot of enforcement. We go around every day to all the various facilities, be they the retail points and especially the wholesale points because that's where a lot of things happen. Mm. So we go to the wholesale points, we get to the importers and see how the things are kept before we even license them. So the importers are even licensed based on the fact that they have good storage facilities. And then we get to the retailers and then the public education bit is because when the consumer knows what he or she is buying and really understand the consequences of his or her actions, some of these things will be reduced mm. because the consumer is very well informed. So, but aside that, mm. we are still enforcing. So, how do the I, as a consumer, know, for example, if um, the shop in my neighborhood, uh, the lady in there puts off her freezer in the night because it's locked? I mean, how, how do but we you know? You can buy from the cold store, so mm -hmm. the freezer is there. You can even look, you can see that, well, it's, it's not on. Mm. So that's one thing. Even when you buy the frozen fish, it may not be so frozen. You see that it's thawing, mm -hmm. and that's not what you're coming to buy. You're buying frozen fish. So that's it. And also another thing about the consumer um, knowing so much is that most of these crimes are consumer-driven. The consumer will tell you, I do not want maybe frozen meat or okay. frozen fish because I want it fresh. Mm. So they take it and they thaw it and present it as, as, safe, fresh. as fresh. So um, is it ever possible that we are going to have um, no substandard food on our market? Is the FDA up to that task? Are we, are we going to get there ever? We will get there. When? Very soon. We are up to the task. We are working assiduously on it, and we will get there. We, ha we have more personnel coming in with mm. this NAPCO thing, mm. so we have more people who will be going out, getting everywhere. It's just because there are lots of people we are mm. seeing to 29 million mm. Ghanaians, and we need to be almost everywhere. Mm. So there is more collaboration with the um, municipal, metropolitan, and district assemblies and all that. So we'll definitely... I, I'm, I'm told in times past, we used to have food inspectors who would go to our local eateries almost every month to inspect, to ensure, to even sometimes taste the food and, 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 and be sure that, look, this is up to standard. Do we have that now? Do we still have that now? It's not in times past. We still have food inspectors. We have... FDA officers going to food, um, to eateries, and we issue out um, food hygiene permits every year. But so isn't but isn't that, that isn't that too long? Too long a time. Yes, but then depending, we issue out the um, permits for a year. But depending on the nature of the business and how um, clean the place is, how hygienic it is, we have what we call risk analysis. We do that and say maybe this one has to be visited 
every three months. Those has to be visited every month. Those has to be visited every six months. So we do this risk analysis. Some may just have to be visited in a year. Mm. But one thing is that we don't taste the food because that's not really, we are, it's not because it tastes good or not. It's okay. because the place is hygienic mm -hmm. and the food that is produced there will not cause harm to the consumer. Ah. So, that's so the please, if you, if you own a, uh, an eatery and the FD official we says he that, wants to taste the food, maybe that. he just wants free lunch. So, <laughs> well, you just had it here. That's not supposed to be done. We well, finally, in, um, in wrapping up this conversation, well, I'd like you to give us an update on this um, tilapia issue, if, if, if there's any, um, and uh, so that we could just allay fears, because you know tilapia is widely it's, eaten. Yes, that one was being done with the uh, Ministry of Agri, because that was the fresh um, tilapia being taken from the um, the pond. Fans. Yes, the fans. You know, fisheries and aquaculture and all that. And there is no there is no cause for mm. alarm. Mm. Everything is under control. You know we are also consumers. Mm. We are regulators and we are consumers. So there is no uh, cause. Is the MD on Facebook? Yes, we are on, on Instagram. Yes, we are on Instagram. And we are on Twitter as well. Okay. At, um, and GH and you see all those people who advertise things, um, uh, body enhancement. I'm moving away from food a little bit, but body enhancement. Yes, I guess we do see. But if it's body enhancement, then that's more. Of cosmetics okay so definitely i'm sure we really we are dealing with them because okay. we vet advertisements okay. and it's social media advertisements as well and so we do and we need do they don't have fda as um those advertisements has been approved and by vetted, vetted by and approved by, by fda okay. if they don't have it shows that they okay. haven't and so we'll deal with them well it's a good way of telling us that that's happening oh, sure it is. all right thank you very much and uh, that was uh, maria Abba lovelace and um johnson she's chief regulatory officer and head of food enforcement of the at the fda and we've been having a conversation about public health and uh, so if you go out to any shop just make sure that the food is not expired uh, look out for the expiration date and uh, a lot of other um, essential information that we've received from her thank you so much for your time and uh, there's more information coming up in business shortly. Daryl Kwao is standing by with the latest to stay.